Hello everyone and welcome! In this video I'm going to be explaining cross-plane versus flat-plane V8 engines. Now if you haven't already watched my video on V8 engines, you may want to check that out prior to watching this. So, the way they get their name, flat-plane versus cross-plane, uh, basically just has to do with the crankshaft uh, and what it looks like. So with a cross-plane crankshaft, um, you can see the crankshaft that goes up here, out to the right, back over to the left, and then down. And so if you're looking at it uh, from towards this uh, crankshaft, if you're looking into it, you're going to have cylinders 1 and 2 are going to be connected up at the top, cylinders 7 and 8 connected down to the bottom, uh, 5 and 6 on the left, 3 and 4 on the right, just like we've drawn here. Now with a flat plane V8, everything's going to be in a flat plane, hence the name. So we've got 1 and 2, 7 and 8, which are going to be up high, and then 3 and 4, 5 and 6, which are going to be down low, and then this will simply rotate and those will change. So that's what it'll look like looking onto the crankshaft. So let's kind of analyze the forces that are going on with each of these, and that'll help us determine why uh, both of these exist. So looking at a cross plane, uh, what we're going to have here is this cylinder in the front is going to be up near top dead center, this one at the rear down at uh, bottom dead center, and then these two are going to be offset uh, 90 degrees, uh, and they're going to be a flat. So that's how this system is going to be set up, so these will be rotating. Um, and basically what we've got going on here is you've got your primary forces, being balanced out here, except they're offset, so they're going to kind of, uh, it's going to create a moment on this crankshaft, so what you're going to have to do is add counterweight, um, and so counterweights are going to be what's balancing out these primary forces and balancing out this moment that's going to want to kind of torque this engine. Now the great thing about cross-plane V8 engines and why they are used is look at the secondary forces. So we've got two forces going down, two little forces going up, these are going to balance each other out, hence it's going to have a secondary balance. So now that's the great thing, that's why this engine is used, um, but let's look at a flat plane uh, engine. So basically a flat plane engine is the equivalent of two inline four cylinders. So this flat plane V8 is basically two inline fours where you've got the first and fourth piston are going to be in unison going up and down, and then the second and third will be together going up and down. Now if you've watched my video on four cylinders, you know that the primary forces are going to balance out, but the secondary forces aren't. So an engine, a flat plane V8, is going to have a secondary engine imbalance, and so there's going to be vibration because of that, and that's why uh, this is sometimes preferred over it. So let's talk about advantages and disadvantages of each type. So cross plane V8, as we said, secondary engine balance, so it's got a smooth uh, engine, little vibration, so that's why it is used. The disadvantage, well because of this uh, engine moment here that's created, you're going to have to have a heavy crankshaft uh, to balance out the piston movement, um, and so that heavy crankshaft means additional rotational inertia, um, a less responsive engine. Also, by having a larger uh, crankshaft, or by adding these counterweights on, you're going to have a larger crankshaft, and that can in turn mean a larger crankcase. And so by increasing the size of the crankcase, you may have to raise the engine up a bit, and then you're going to have a higher center of gravity versus a flat plane uh, V8 engine. Also, one thing uh, is the uneven firing order for scavenging, the exhaust scavenging. So I'm going to explain this in more detail in a future video, but basically uh, the pulses of the exhaust aren't exactly uh, even, whereas they are on the flat plane. They alter between each cylinder bank. So, advantages of a flat plane V8. Well, it's not going to have as much counterweight on the crank, so that means less rotational inertia. It's going to have a more responsive um, crankshaft, so your engine's going to rev up a little easier, and you're going to have less power going to, into rotating that crank, more going to the wheels. Also, uh, the exhaust scavenging, because the exhaust pulses are going to alter from bank to bank. Um, Disadvantages, as we've mentioned, the secondary imbalance. So the reason uh, flat planes aren't as common is because of this secondary uh, imbalance. And so the reason they are used, though, is for racing, because in racing applications, you're not necessarily as concerned about uh, the secondary engine balance. You just want a fast revving engine uh, that doesn't drain any power out of it. Um, it's not going to last forever, but it's a racing application, so it doesn't need to. Um, and so this is typically used in higher-end cars. Um, and also in higher-end cars, you're going to have lighter weight materials uh, and shorter strokes, and in doing this, you're really reducing the, f the effect of the secondary imbalance, so you can have um, a fairly vibration-free flat plane V8, uh, depending on how much money you throw into it. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.